I think it's important, I suppose, to look at the subject of silage in more detail this year, particularly following the winter that we've actually come through. Um, the most important thing to do at this point in time is actually to look at what you actually need and do a calculation for the winter ahead. Um, first crops may, may actually be a little bit light, but the important thing to do is as soon as we've that made is to do the sums again and look at what we need for the winter. I think in summary what you're looking at is about 1.6 tonnes per dairy cow per month. But the most important thing to do is to make sure that you're counting enough of months. Almost every pit in the country is depleted, so we need to put in some level of contingency there. And so that should range between 10 and 20%. And even if we can't build a reserve this year, we should build some and add to it next year if that is possible. Any in calf heifers then are one to two year old stock, allow 1.3 tonnes for those, and for the weanlings, 0.7. All our business manager teams will be equipped with a fodder calculator tool to help farmers on the ground. Uh, feel free to reach out and get them to do the sums with you. We'll also have that facility available on Glanbia Connect over the next week or two. And, it, and you know, when second cut is made, do exactly the same thing. Go back and plan. But in doing all of that, the important thing to do is not to compromise on quality. It actually costs more to compensate for quality with concentrate use than it actually does for quantity. So keep your quality right. You know, if you drop 7-8% uh, DMD, you'll require an extra 2 kgs of concentrate per cow per day in the spring. And I suppose take cognizance as well of the fact of what quality you need for certain jobs. A good 70 DMD silage uh, is, is more than adequate for dry cows if they're dried off in adequate condition uh, and we don't need them to gain weight. On the other hand, you know, we should still target 72 to 75 for milking cows in the spring. So keep quality in mind, but obviously our primary objective this year is to build some quantity with it. We in Glanbia have developed a fertilizer program for use uh, for second cut silages in particular and uh, this will be available to our business managers and uh, farmers if they want to use it themselves. This program gives the best advice possible and gives the best products possible to use for second cut silage taking into account the nitrogen required and the P and K status of the field and the offtake off that field for both first and second cut silages. All we're trying to do here is help farmers to make the most efficient use of fertilizer for their second cut silages. Where the two cuts of silage takes off uh, over 30 units of pea and 180 units of potash and that has to be replaced and, and it's difficult to replace that especially a year like this where very often slurries didn't get out on time or onto the proper fields and now we're faced with a second cut silage where by there's a huge requirement in many cases for both the pea and the K along with the nitrogen to grow the crop. The other stat that's very important is that if P or K are uh, deficient you can you, you can have less than 50 percent efficiency of your nitrogen and therefore um, you're not getting the proper use of your nitrogen unless you can balance the uh, lp and k in the soil with that nitrogen and uh, uh, that's what we're about with this program well uh we're chasing our tail a bit on the grazing end of it brian because we didn't get out in time so our grazing is a bit strong, so we're trying to curtail that, right. increase the area that we cut, yeah. and maybe let it go a little stronger, maybe slightly less quality, get more bales. More, more bulk up. More bulk up. And the calculator that Glambia has this year, you can work out your chemical P and K that, that's required to get the total yield. You can work out your budget from what Martin has done earlier, where we've done a fodder budget for the farm that you can require what you need and then you can work your P and K from that. And will you come back with slurry straight away? How quick will you be in with slurry on this? Well, the day after, hopefully, that the bales are gone. You'll be in getting slurry yeah, straight away? Straight away, yeah. And are you able to allocate that bit more? How much, how much pressure is it putting on the, on the milking block trying to allocate that bit extra? Well, because there's actually massive growth at the moment. Yes. And they didn't get out as early. We're in a little bit of a problem they're Your grazing. Decision making time. Yeah, they're grazing swarts that are a little bit heavy. So we're trying to cut them back, cut them back, increase the area that we cut for silage. And that, that's our plan. And if necessary, cut back our numbers.
Right, okay. Uh, I don't want to be caught again. Well, sure, that's the thing. We've, we've all seen the back end of silage walls this year, and the aim is probably to keep the foot down and to drive on grass as much as possible to Ab try not be caught. Absolutely, absolutely. But you still want to get as much quality as you can yeah. and as much dry matter in the bale as you can.